Hi folks, good morning. Hope you've had a good weekend. Looking forward to watching England tonight on the World Cup uh, for football. But a long way to go for now and then. Uh, I'm going to try to explain some things about oil painting. I'm not really an over-experienced oil painter. I, I do it in, as an alternative to watercolour and acrylic. I, I love it. I do prefer it because of the 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 possibilities the wonderful effects you can get with oils but just if you're starting out in oils and you've been inspired by anything i've done and you want to have a go you don't need to buy loads and loads of colors or certainly don't buy packs of 10 beginners watercolors or packs boxes of 20 colors you don't you'll never need them i'm i'm just using a basic uh, palette of cadmium yellow pale there's loads of different yellows, but this is what I use. Cadmium red, it's all my cadmium red, very common. Ultramarine and black. That's my basic oil palette. If I'm painting uh, rocks and things, I will use a bit of uh, burnt sienna and uh, possibly a, a green. But I like to mix my greens from the, the black and the yellow. Also, brushes, bristle brushes, they need to have a bit of, bit of body in them. Otherwise, you'll you'll be too be too sloppy on the, on the board or whatever surface you're going to use. So we've got those. Well, we've got some little brushes, worn out little brushes here. Uh, just these tiny brushes for figures. They're not very well. They're a bit oily, but they're they're clean. There's no oil oil paint in them, but there's oil from the walnut oil and this is a mixture of walnut oil and alkyd walnut oil just because walnut alkyd oil is quite expensive so i cut it with a, a bit of edible walnut oil from the local supermarket it's just as good uh right okay now i'm going to take you up to the board here we are Turn up a bit more Ooh, down a bit more let's get the square on Okay, that'll do. Right, plenty of rag or an old piece of toweling. That's the best thing to clean your brushes. You can use solvents like white spirit, turpentine, and stuff to clean your brushes. But if you're allergic to it or it doesn't agree with you, don't use it. Clean your brushes at the end in, with small figure and dishwasher stuff. Uh, the best, the best solvent I found for uh, cleaning the brushes as you go is paraffin, kerosene, to Americans. Uh, it keeps the bristles lovely and soft because it is an oil, but it's a brilliant cleaner. But if you're cleaning your brushes in a towel as you go, your your paint your your toweling is going to fill up with kerosene or turpentine, and you'll be breathing it under your nose, and it's not good, believe you me. Uh, right, okay, so that's all we need to know. Now I'm, I'm I only do landscapes, occasionally do buildings. I, I did spend a year doing Venice paintings, which was very, very good experience, and I had quite success with it. But here I am. I've got to be able to paint pictures within a reasonable amount of time. Otherwise, I'll get bored, you'll get bored, and you'll have to fast forward. Uh, I try to do these within the hour. Watercolours, probably half an hour and less. And acrylics, because acrylic dries very fast, uh, you can carry on with it. With this, you have to work over a bit here, a bit there. So because I'm using an alkyd based white, titanium white, um, that will help the other colours to dry, apart from the, 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 the uh, medium I'm using. This is a piece of mount card, you know, the stuff out the middle of a, of a mat. Don't throw it away, paint on it. And what I've done, I've primed both sides of this with a um, with, with a PVA glue, dilute PVA glue, one in one. It depends on the thickness of your PVA glue. I buy it from a local uh, DIY merchant or a builder's merchant in a big can, big plastic can, and, I, and it's the most useful stuff. And when mine's this side was wet, with the dilute PVA glue, I put in some polyfiller or whatever you you would use as a quality crack filler in plaster. 
There it is, poly filler, multi-purpose, shrink and crack resistant filler. I sprinkle the powder on the wet uh, PVA glue, dilute, and work it in with the brush. So it's a lovely rough surface with a, with a bit of texture. You can put as much texture on as you like. Um, but the point of this is to seal both sides. You need both sides sealed because you just do one side, it buckles up. But the coat on the other side, when this side's dry, will keep it lovely and flat. Now that is a waterproof surface, both sides. I hope it's a waterproof surface anyway. But but you need to see, you can paint straight on it, but the acids in the paint will eventually undermine the wood pulp that this is made of. But by sealing the PVA glue, you put what I would reckon to be a, 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 a permanent painting, provided you don't paint it and crack it or whatever. But you, you would have to mount this either on a piece of uh, MDF to set it up and put it in a, in a frame made for oil paintings, or you can frame it behind a, a mat, you know, like one of these, and you can put it in a, a watercolour frame. So there we are. That's, that's, that's that. So let, let's paint a landscape. I love landscape. It's my, the one thing I've always wanted to do. Trees and skies. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and I know you like meadows. They've come down very well on YouTube and on Facebook. And that's an indication. Uh, one thing I would suggest that if, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Uh, to give a thumbs down on a free video is a bit, uh, a bit it says more about you than it does me. So having said that, uh, we'll proceed. So I'll dip my brush into the medium, nice and sloppy, and we'll uh, we'll put a sky in. So a bit of ultramarine. You can't see this. I'm sad to say, a bit of bit of white, and we'll just if you over dilute the paints, it will it will move about, but it won't cover. But then I don't try to do a finish painting straight away just work your way into it i am very much a make it up as a go along painter but i'm basing it all on experience now what a lot of lot of oil on that paper will just lighten like that blue a bit I used just pure refined linseed oil last week on one and it dried in a day. And rules about oil painting is here uh, thick over lean, not lean over thick. If you put thick painting on this, thick paint, and you go on this tacky the next day and carry on with it and you put a thin coat over it, you leave it to dry, thin paint will dry quickly, the under the thick stuff will dry over a long time, unless you're using alkyd resin based type paints, and it will crack the, the thinner surface. That's why the old masters got cracks all over their paintings, if you don't understand that. But if you're painting wet in wet, it doesn't matter what you do. You can paint wet in wet, put thick on thin, thin on thick. Provided it's still wet, it will work. It won't come to any damage. Right, that's a bit, bit, bit dark really for the sky, but so let's put, put on this. Just using the oil that's there. Now, if, if, you, if this is, gets too light, it's going to overexpose on the uh, camera on the webcam. I was encouraged today buying a bread maker with the better fourth one. My wife has been making our bread for some years now and it really is uh, nice. You know what goes in it. No bleach or anything like that, just proper flour and ingredients and my grandson loves it. It's so different and there's something in it. It's not a large loaf made to look, or a bit of flour and water made to look large. It uh, is generally substantial. do not always toast up great. Right? But, uh, yeah, that's coming, I don't know. Just 
fill in the gaps. See, I'm holding the brush. I do hold it like that as well, but it makes my wrist ache. And it's because I prefer to use the brush like that. So you're away from the uh, support. Okay, we'll just let that sort of settle in. Now, I use student quality paints. I very seldom use an artist's quality. One, because they're expensive and all this comes out of my own pocket, apart from a bit of advertising revenue. You can support my Patreon channel, which will, uh, for a small amount of money, you can see all my exclusive paintings, watercolours, acrylics and oils, mostly watercolours. And it does help to pay for for this. I mean, a tube of paint like that, that's the Winsor & Newton Griffin Alkyd White, that's over £12 for a 200 ml tube. But these are just a little bit less. They're the student range, Winton. Winton, that's a smaller tube of, what size is that? 37 mil. that's the usual size. But you can't seem to get the 120 mils. They're, they're a great size. These I've had for years. <coughs> they do They do last. So, uh, now, we'll, we'll put in um, a bit of... Uh, what I like a bit of bit of bit of background. It's very similar to one I did on. Well, it seems to be similar to one I did on. I don't know Saturday, so Friday. I lose count of track of time. I hope this isn't too dark. Um, I can alter the brightness, but if I do, it might. I've got it set on automatic exposure, so that should be okay. But the brightness, I can increase the brightness. Oh, okay, well, we'll let that go. That's just over halfway. It's a Logitech um, webcam C920. It's very, it is starting to produce good stuff, but I still get the exposure on or the brightness. And that changes depending on if it's a light paint or a white piece of paper or a dark piece of paper. So I have to watch that. This brush is worn out. Look, it's the metal is worn out it must be 20 odd years old <coughs> but it's still a great brush a bit of oil and a bit of bit of black a bit of bit of blue a bit of white more blue and we'll just put in a background of, of trees distant trees these will be distant because i, I shall make them like uh, foggy, misty, when I can start to blend it. And now these sort of views are, I see every week when I go on our bike ride with the old men. Um, what that? Whiter, bit, bit, bit of light in there. Uh, Morden Hall Park, there's a beautiful park nearby. It's Morden, Surrey, it's in London, it's all Greater London. I live in Greater London, but we're on the edge of the countryside, really. We've got a lovely area nearby, they're called the Small Holdings. They were set up after the war on fields for returning soldiers small holdings and they're the, the wooden buildings are lovely and it's on a hill big hill and we do our bike rides up and around there going towards past in epsom yeah yeah you need your horizon there to be dark because it will pick up the light it will counter change the light on the tops of the grasses that you're going to put in, if you're going to put in. This is only just a, an exercise. You might, what I'm doing for you are demonstrations of how I approach a painting. I don't spend any time to make them perfect. It's what it is. 
It's a demonstration for free. Okay, so that that'll do. Try to make the um, the shapes different. Try not to repeat yourself. Now I can put some light colour across there when that goes a bit tacky. See, the white is having the effect of making the the other paints, which are slow dryers, dry. As is the the alkyd res alkyd based walnut oil. Okay, so. Uh, do we want to put, uh, we can put a clump of trees in, we can put a pond in, I like ponds, but I like I like light across the horizon. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but they, they, all, they all end up different. Nothing is the same. Everyone I do, the trees are different. There's, it's infinite all the painting. With this, you can change your mind as you go, and I often do. I even do that with watercolors. I start, and then they just take on a life of their own. I'm not working from any reference material. I do, but everything I paint, I share. Now I've done all my gallery stuff. I. Oh, this will also run, ran. But painting, for those that struggle, it's probably because you don't put enough time in. I, I'm always painting, not solidly. I don't do hours at a time. I get bored as well. I, I do this because I do it. I'm going into the habit of doing it. But I just. Just three colours, you can get a tremendous range of reds and no, ah, that won't show so much because it's on uh, a similar colour background with the burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is about my my most my favourite colour, but I, I'm keeping all this simple because to keep it relatively easy for you but uh, apart from keeping your brushes clean not a lot really about about this i'm making it up as i go along i am working from start to finish so i don't know what i put on there and i want to mix some some nice shadow areas in there let's just Merge all that. Got a nice soft, soft look. We're going to put in some some brilliant greens in a minute. I'm, I'm always tempted to put a bit of viridian in, but the trouble is, it stops you from mixing the greens from from the primaries, like the blue and the yellow, or the black and the yellow. The black and yellow. It's an old. It's an old technique. I'll show you. Touch of touch of black, and a lump of white. And you get a, you get look at that, look, 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 lovely, lovely, beautiful, yellowy green, beautiful. But it will only show according to the dark that's behind it. So you can, if you want, prime that with black, black oil paint. I did that a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. You can lighten it with a bit of white, look. Somebody asked me if I do a, plow, a, a wheat field. Well, to do that, you, what you do, you, you just put a basic colour on, which would be a yellow ochre with a bit of burnt umber, maybe, and do that, and then just put a few stalks of, of uh, wheat, and that would suggest that the whole lot is a wheat field. You have to paint every every head, every seed head. Oh. I don't really like the the green. This green there because it's merged with the with the blue underneath. But we can change all that as we go. Now let's get some nice red, yellow, white oil on the ready side. Oh, look, let's just put it on and leave it alone. I 
that. Sort of stippling with the sides of the brush. Now we've got some lovely colours in there. Now we want to put in some some dark, some shadow. So blue and red, plenty of oil. You can add a bit of black in with that, and we'll start to put in some heavier darks. And we can superimpose on the top of that some really good lights. And we want some other darks in here. So if you put a pond in, you want the light to show up against the uh, darkness of the pond. So a bit of white in with that mix. I'm using colours on the palette already there. So let's just put some of this in here and there. See, the darks make the lights lighter. I'm not doing a wheat field, I'm just doing, doing grasses and texturing. See where I want the dark in here. Okay, now on top of that, we're going to go on with the lights. More white, more yellow. And because I put dark underneath that, right, we'll, we'll change that now. Get that red. Put some grasses sticking up. Looks as, I'm trying to make them look as if they are sticking up from below. It's going into oh, the brushes making a bit of a mess of it at the moment. Okay. Right, now we're going to go in with some light bluey white. And I'm going to use the uh, size of the brush if I can but mixing it with the blue that's on the palette to reflect the sky above okay hold your breath Right now we'll put some dark, some darker. See that color there? We'll, we'll see if we can darken that. Just the blue, the oil, red. That light back on top. Don't forget your oil. Just 
submerge it slightly. There's only so many ways you can show the same scene or a similar scene. But I want to get in some, some of those greens now. Uh, let's use. Oh, I'll use this whole brush here. That one. Bit of white, bit of yellow, bit of oil, bit of black. Yeah, I've done it. You know, we're going over that dark color now. I've got the board at an angle. I would normally work upright if I wasn't filming, but which is never. Oh, I did, did one on Saturday. I don't know if I put it on. I think I'll put it on Patreon. I just a piece of card like this, and I just went at it with acrylic and made a made a made something out of nothing. Then we can elaborate on that. That lovely pile yellow. Now I'm always I've always got in my mind Morden Hall Park and the what we call the wetlands. It's a it's owned by the public on behalf of or by or administered by the National Trust, our National Trust, which has many many lovely estates properties held in the nation and the Morden Hall, Morden Hall Park is is one of those properties and they very beautifully put in this boardwalk which I've told you about loads of times uh, over, oh, it's probably about two, three hundred yards long through the wetlands, and they've got all these lovely thatch grasses growing, or thatch type of uh, growth, and they cut it down in the winter. I wouldn't surprise me if they didn't set it off for thatching. Look, there's loads of oil on this. No, it's just glorious. Oh, see that green? See that coming there? We can work in some some more of that uh, magic, the uh, the dark. But I'm just enjoying this this yellow stuff at the moment. Just bunging it on. I can put a bit more water in there because the bauble. In these, where all these these grasses are growing, there's lots of water. It's, it's shallow. It's very close to the water table. I think that's what you call it. See, how I'm doing that. I'm not painting individual bits of grass. Just using the size of the brush and working over and over. As it goes tacky, it will take more paints and get the dry brush. Oh. Just gently just take that yellow green up higher 
Once we've done enough of this, we can then detail it. Get a brilliant bit of white into that yellow. I'm not aiming for exact copies of greens that actually exist. I'm just making it up. So I, I'm really enjoying this now. It's just that lovely oil with this colour shining through. All right, let's put a bit of warm red in, in this foreground here. Look. Pitch of oil. But a lot of the ground colour, it's what we call the basic colour before you start painting, usually a neutral colour so that your values, your colour values will be more accurately expressed. In other words, if you put if you paint when you paint all colours, you're painting so it's a white paper, and whatever you put on as a colour looks dark by comparison to the white, the contrast. So what you do is you tend to compensate and make the colours too light. Oh, just some stalks. That should be a green. Dark green. So it's the black, the queen of colours. Right. Just a light touch. Can you put white ones in there or very, very light green ones? But you could have, have a lot of oil on your brush, otherwise, the paint won't come off. Let's just work on this. Let's just put a bit of white in there. Or well, yellow with white, grey. You need your board high enough or your support high enough so that your the end of your brush doesn't go in the paint so, so this, this is too low really all right let's get that dark color back the red we do this right every week summer winter we don't go out in the rain, of course. We're getting old. Right. Some white and yellow. I have noticed there are some irises in this. I wonder if we could just put in some water. See any fox born with a lot of little birds and things. No, it's, when you're doing impressionist painting, I know, strictly speaking, impressionist painting is plein air, but oh, I don't like it. I, I like doing this in the studio. I go and have a cup of tea and keep warm or Cool. We want some darker blue in there, I think. Uh, no, it's too, too, too dark. Mm. 
So when you're looking down, you're reflecting the, the higher parts of the sky. When you're looking at that pond, you're looking at that. But I haven't finished the sky yet, but I just want to just get these light greens back over over that. Probably just a bit too wet now. Or oh, probably need just a bit more light, some flicks of light blue. It's going on the edge of my brush. Okay, well, we'll let that go. Let's, let's do a bit of sky now. Clean the brush. Uh, now we want a bit of. Bit of Red, bit of bit of yellow, plenty of oil. Mix in with that sky colour on it. Put it on. Any softening now? So it's all very, very simple. Put these lighter clouds on the horizon. I love doing these. So with, with acrylic, you'll have to work much faster than this. All right, let's just knock that intensity of blue down. How's this camera? Well, that's fine. Oh, it's your We're creating a, a mood as much as anything. I mean, let's face it, people know what people look like, and portraits are very difficult to do. It's a case of likeness. With landscape, you can take, well, you have a different approach. What you put on is your idea, it will look right. It will look like a tree. It might not be a very good tree, but it will have a likeness to a tree. Oh, there we go. So now. We've got a nice, nice bit of light sky. Now I just want to put a bit of, bit of in, not in pasto so much, but just a bit of thicker stuff. I'll just put it on. Then I'll go somewhere else for a little while. Too much blue in there. All right, and we can just soften all that. Gradual. change of subtle colours. Right, okay, so we've got background. Now let's put in some some catching the light shrubby stuff. So yellow. Black. A lot of oil, more the white, catching the light. So 
still preserving our our blue behind. I'm going to put some more darks into that. More of pure yellow, just catching. We can have some bare patches, a bit of red, a bit of orange. More red. It's a bit of warm in bits of it. Okay, let's put in some darks now. Some back of that, some of that shadowy colour, the blue and the red. See, by doing this, I can go back with those grasses underneath. I will put some larger trees in, if I remember. <laughs> Try not to do a lot of patterns. No, we're just going to have darker green, I suppose. Let's try a darker green. That's better. Plenty of oil. All about lights and darks. But from this distance, you won't see a lot of detail. You'll see shapes. I'm going to with that black. Just a variant. So I don't believe everything you've heard about using black. That's good. Right. So I can come there with the light grasses. And I've got my yellow. I'll let that dry a bit. I can go underneath it though. <clears throat> with my light grasses. By the time I put the greens back, that will sure it look quite nice, but I've got to wait for it to dry for a little bit. Oh, it's a little bit wet there. I'm 
Uh, I like that colour there. That's just the red and the yellow mixed with a bit of white. We don't want it looking like a line. That's why we're taking the grasses up into that canopy, not that canopy, that those shrubs at the back. Right now, let's get him some light green or yellow, bit of oil. Showing, we like greens. Just catching the light. I suppose that's going to show the colours are too close together in time. Just uh, changing the colour a little bit. I'm not worried about the, about the time in this because if you get to this stage, you can always fast forward. It really is a glorious part. Now I want some bigger trees now, so let's get some brilliant greens. And uh, let's uh oh, oh, well, change. let's go over here. Put some darker greens in there now. Right, uh, get some more some darks back in the shadow area right now let's see if we can get some Some light green yeah. plenty of oil. Some 
Victor. Great making it up, isn't it? You can change your mind anytime you like. Okay. Right, let's anchor that a little bit with those. A bit dark and stuff in here. So I'm going to mix a bit of red in with that black. get some no, this is the reason it needs to be dark green in it so we'll change that green is better also, we can put the lights back over the green. Changing the shape of it slightly. Get some shadow under there. Right, I'll leave that for a little while for the moment. I just want to go put some stuff over the other side here. to balance it a little bit. Dark green back. Okay, now lights. Not a lot of sky shine through them, is it? I don't know that. That's much too. Light back. Oh. Do you know, I don't like that. All that trouble, but it's 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 so close. But I'm gonna just soften all that with the sky colours. I don't like the shape, it's too, it's too, uh, too round. Uh, well, let's put this thick in the double then. Green. Change of colours. Mm. 
right now the darker green a bit of oil right um, I want to put some of that color there back in into there that's a bit better let's just go back with um, the uh, oil I mean the uh, light colors sort of a dark green just dark greens Um, that's not too bad. Still not good. But this happens to all paintings. You you get off to a good start, and then at some point, the painting goes away from you. Let's write some sort of white or that creamy colour. It doesn't really show, does it? Okay, counter change isn't very good there. It's too Some darks. Well, I'm going to let that go. I can't do much more to it than that. Um, I we can just add a little bit of bit of light. On here. Okay, I'm not going to do much more to that sky. I think we need to blend it a bit. So I'll we'll just do a bit of blending. It's just a little bit dark. So last knockings now. A bit of blue, a bit of white, a bit of oil. I hope that colour's not it seems alright on the board. I'll have a look at it in a moment, the colour on or the intensity of brightness. I'm just thickening this up a little bit. Soften all that. Put a bit of cloud showing in here and there. What you do this, take it off the page as well. Otherwise, it looks like just filling it in. Uh, 
over head. Okay, well that'll do. I'll put in a mount. Uh, well, what do? Let's just look at there. Detail on there. Cutting around the tops. The grasses. And we're just going with a bit of, a bit of light. A bit there. I think that is just a clump, isn't it? But uh, well, uh, oh, knife. Let's try a little bit of. Right, put a mount on it. I don't think it's as bad as I'm making out, but, uh, but as I, to repeat myself, it is a demonstration, it's not a finished work of art, it's, it's a demo for you to have a go at, get inspired by and do something like it yourself. I'm working through from memory, but that is probably the worst tree I've done for for a while, but I think we've spent enough time on this. Over an hour, which is just about long enough, I suppose. I could do them in two parts, but um, I will be tempted to put one part on Patreon. Uh, we won't mount. Oh, put that on there. That is probably better, better without what I've just done. Put that on there. Clip. Oops, not that clip. Uh, clip there. Oops. Yeah. It's looking very pastel. All right. Let's just move the camera back. <laughs> Well, there we are. Now, I think the colour and brightness of that is, is pretty accurately reflected. I'll just take brightness up a, a bit. I don't want the, uh, the mount to glare, but I think about colour intensity. Let's try that. Oh, it's all good, isn't it? That's about right. Okay, well, we'll let that go. Thanks for watching, folks, or persevering. Have a go yourselves. See you soon. Bye-bye.